clock must fire. We are here always for you. We are always here for you. What does that mean? We value our people and our people we serve. Our focus is establishing teams. Trust, empowerment, accountability, mindset, and service. The regular monthly meeting of CACMAS 5 to 6 1, the board of directors will now come to order at 5 01 p.m. for ORS 192.610 to 192.690. For ORS 192.650, this meeting is being recorded. The video recording of this meeting will be placed on the Clackamas Fire website. Chief Brown, are there any changes to the agenda? Thank you, uh, Thomas. We do have some, some changes. There's a revised uh, agenda on the website. Uh, Chief Stewart is unable to attend, so I will be sitting in for his pieces that he, will be, that he was supposed to deliver. And then we also had some updated information uh, added to the board packet regarding data for the volunteer services. So those are the changes to the agenda. Thank you. Uh, should we approve the minutes? Does any board member have any comments or changes to the minutes to share? None for me. Jim, no, brother. Okay. If there are no changes, the minutes from the regular meeting of July 18, 2022 stand approved. Has written, Chief. Awesome. Um, do we want to public comment? Yeah, public comment okay. first, and then we'll go to. Okay. Yeah. Ariel, do we have anybody signed up? We did not. I didn't think so. Okay. Perfect. They all they all stop coming because I'm the president. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it. They don't know what I'm saying, so they don't. Uh, know I, love it. Going there. I love it. I love it. That's okay. Right. I knew that everything is in good order with your intro. Oh, that's right. Uh, See, Marilyn throws that. Right okay. Nick. Okay. Hey, thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, at this time, I, I would like to uh, turn some time over to retired Division Chief Bill Conway uh, for a presentation of Citizen Life Saving Award. Chief Conway. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Welcome. members of the Welcome. board. Good to see you again. Very good to see you. Um, so it, I retired from Clackamas Fire as Division Chief at EMS the end of May of 2020. And one of the things that uh, I did as part of my U.S. duties is I brought Pulse Point to Clackamas Fire in 2014. And um, for those who don't know what Pulse Point is, it's, a, it's an app you can download free and it helps public safety agencies engage with and communicate with the, their citizens in the community. So really cool feature is you can download or, or you can get it to alert you to any instances of sudden cardiac arrest within a quarter mile of you. And that's important because one of the best things we can do to treat sudden cardiac arrest is to get chest compression started as soon as possible after the, the, the cardiac arrest occurs. So as a matter of fact, research shows that for every minute you go without a, a cardiac arrest victim goes without CPR, their chances of survival decrease by 10%. So my goal bringing you both point to Clackamas Fire was one, to get more citizen involvement, more citizens and bystanders performing CPR, and to ultimately increase the survival rate from cardiac arrest. So in 2014, I did a presentation to the board on Pulse Point, what it was, um, why it was important to the fire district. And after the presentation, there was somebody in the audience that I talked to and um, explained what Pulse Point is. We had a chat, I showed them on the phone what it did and all the cool things it did. And then I told him how to download on his phone, which he did. Chief? Awesome, thank you so much. Our very own director, Chris Haas, on August 2nd, uh, while attending a hot ox night event in uh, Reno, um, was out to dinner with his friends. And this Pulse Point uh, app that Chief Conway was speaking to sounded. Uh, Director Haas, without hesitation, looked down, saw the address, and recognized that that was two restaurants down from his location. He sprung to action with his friends looking at him going, what is this guy doing and why is he running out of the, uh, out of the restaurant? As he ran into the restaurant, there was a, a, a female, mid forties, in distress, unconscious, not breathing, with somebody trying to do the Heimlich maneuver behind her. Um, he was very, he was unsuccessful, to which Director Hodge recognized that she was unsuccessful, that he was unsuccessful, mostly based on, on uh, his positioning. 
uh, Director Haas stepped in, uh, did the Heimlich, got the, the female to the ground, to which a uh, hamster-sized uh, piece <laughs> of steak uh, came from the patient's mouth, uh, which she then began to start breathing on her own. As paramedics arrived, she was breathing on her own. Uh, Director Hawes uh, gave them a, a quick synopsis and then went back uh, with his friends to, to try to enjoy the rest of the night. His actions directly saved this citizen's life. And without him, the outcome would have been different. It was important to me and important to us as an organization to bring in Chief Conway for this presentation based on Chief Conway introducing the app to Director Haas and Director Haas having a direct impact and saving a person's life that otherwise might not have been. And so with that, I'd like to give this over to Chief Conway. So <laughs> this, this is just a certificate to uh, Director Haas of our appreciation of giving you the Citizens Life uh, a Saving Award from Division Chief Conway in behalf of the fire district. Great job, Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me, hurt. Love you, bro. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you all. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Nice to see you, Bill. I'll let you go ahead and get your chair. <laughs> <laughs> we can only do one of these at a time. Thanks. Super proud of you, Chris. It's not. It's not uh, having the courage to have that and then to step up and act. That's uh, just super proud of, of your actions and, and what you did. Thank you. Well, that is, I think, one of the one of fundamental philosophy that I have is we can always find ways to recognize people for the little, and you know, it would have been easily forgotten or not. Heard. How did you find this out? Um, I've got connections. I bet. I better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thomas? Uh, uh, yeah, on. Jim. Was that our Chris Haas that did that? Yes. Director yeah, Chris Haas. Chris. Power on. I, I saw you were at Hot, Hot August Nights on Facebook, but that is so awesome. That was an awesome story, and I am so glad that you were able to do that. So. Very good, my friend. Thanks, Jim. Sometimes all you need is a grumpy old man the size of a small car. Entirely <laughs> <laughs> trained. <laughs> and yes, it was the size of a small hamster. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, oh. Yes. No. But thank you again, and thank you to Fire District for bringing this app. I remember uh, we, wasn't he promoting in schools and all this stuff? Yeah, it's been promoted pretty heavily throughout yeah. the Fackless yeah. County in the area. Chief Conway did an excellent job doing that. Yes. Well, you know, it's, really, it's a hard act to follow, but we do now. <laughs> I, I see you adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. I don't think Melvin would allow me to do that, so I'll move on. Presentation of the strategic plan. We have some change on that, didn't we? Or we yeah, ready? so that, that was the Chief Stewart was going to introduce uh, Chief yeah, Amos. I'll just go ahead and do that. Yeah. Okay. So, Chief Stewart. Okay. And Inspector Matt Amos? Yep. Right? Yep. So he's going to be on Zoom. He's at oh, the National Zoom Fire Zoom. Academy right now. Okay. Uh, so he's okay. going to, yep, there he is. Sweet. So, I, uh, I, uh, this is uh, our annual uh, uh, presentation or, or update to the board as far as strategic plan. Uh, Director Haas and um, uh, Director Wall attended the, the planning retreat. Um, and, and so with, with, with that, I would like to introduce uh, Inspector Matt Amos, who's gonna give uh, the board an update as far as the strategic plan. Matt. Uh, good evening, Thomas and, and the board. Uh, I'm pleased to be presenting the 2023 uh, strategic plan for Clackamas Fire District Number One. Um, this was a, a great opportunity for me and a great adventure working with uh, the fire chief and the assistant chiefs to develop our focus and our strategies for the year, and then conducting 
the planning retreat to develop the divisional level goals. Um, so we developed those goals, worked with all the divisions to come up with those and timelines for those. And from here, it turns into a support role, making sure that those divisions are supported throughout the year and uh, that can move through. Um, so as you can see, we have goals for all of our divisions and departments within Clackamas Fire District number one. And the intent is to keep the board and the fire chief updated monthly on the status as we move through these goals. Um, I will plan on meeting with each division quarterly at a minimum and more often if necessary, and can be available to help and assist with those goals as they move forward with them. Are there any questions? <laughs> we just got moved a little bit. So that's where we lost you, now we got you. Matt, I have a question. When yes. you meet with the department or divisions, do you meet with everybody or the captain or who do you meet with or the whole team? Uh, currently the plan would be to meet with the division heads, be it their division chiefs or the managers for that division. How my my thinking? How is that? And uh, all the participants, all the staff can give input to the leader, so they can get to you about the progress of the implementation of the goals. You understand my question? Yeah. So that the the to answer just because I'm right here, Matt. If you're if you're good, uh, yeah. So. The, this is a return report. So the yeah. division head or division chief would go to their members, whoever's assigned to those tasks. There's a return report tracking mechanism okay. uh, to and from status. What do you need to help uh, complete this goal? That's reviewed back to the division head. That then is uh, that direct link with Matt Amos. Then it's spread through command and general staff. So Matt get the feedback from the division chief on who. That's exactly it. He's okay. the gatekeeper. So it is coming from everything. Yes, it's coming from everybody. He's the gatekeeper to make sure yeah, that, that we are on track uh, to meet. Yeah. And then the inclusiveness of the whole staffing is the whole question. Bingo. Bingo. Thank you. Chris, do you have any questions? No, no. no. I have comments, not a question. Yeah. Um, I want to commend Inspector Amos. Yeah, you're laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember what you said to me. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> He did a really fine job of mediating this group and making it flow and, and go forward. And I really appreciate that because a lot of times, particularly in strategic planning meetings, they kind of fiddle away. But it was uh, on point, but people had time to say what they needed to say. Overall, I was very impressed with the thoughtful and insightful comments that um, the staff present made and their constructive ideas about um, across all ranges of the district and it really reminded me how broad the scope of what we do is it's not just these few things i mean under each of those categories there are subcategories so i say um you know good job done matt and i look forward to updates periodically as we go through the year thank you i appreciate that thank you anybody else no thanks matt thank you matt thank you. have a good evening uh i was there um, one one quick thing I'll just sort of okay. add. One, it's really important to us in, in, in Maryland, um, in, in, and we talked about this in our executive committee last month, uh, and I, I'm going to coin this in layman's terms as scoreboard. Uh, it's really important for us as an organization to, to show the progress of where we're going up to date, and that's the other thing that Matt will be doing is giving a progress percentage-wise on track. Um, that way, it'll be on the district website or wherever, wherever strategic services plans to put that to where the board could just Look and see exactly how we're trending, or the public could as well. So, so that's part of the uh, accountability under transparency. Bingo. Bingo. Okay. Thank you. Any other board members have any questions? Jim? Okay. Uh, board approval of the public relations firm selection. Chief Brown? Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so last week we conducted uh, interviews with four firms. They had put in through a process to uh, become uh, uh, our, our PR committee, our PR group, as well as polling group for uh, the potential levy in May 23. Um, there were 
four quality groups inside the board packet, you'll see their, uh, their, their portfolios and presentations. It was important for us to have that in there for transparency reasons. Um, this, this panel that made the decision was made up of uh, a member from the board of directors, Director Haas, a uh, member of the local, which was shop steward Andrew Gordian, and then fire administration. Um, uh, so what I, you have before you is a memo requesting the board of directors to authorize the fire chief or his designee to negotiate and enter an agreement with Coastline. That was the firm that was selected uh, for public relations services not to exceed $80,000 this fiscal year. Um, and then Director Haas, do you have any comments uh, uh, before I ask you to, to to approve that, do you have any comments based on the process that I did not share? No, I, I think you pretty well covered it, Chief. I, I think that we had four four proposals that were all in their own way, um, pretty impressive. Uh, a lot of it was <clears throat> somewhat an evaluation of what we looked like in a, as a fit wise and for what we were trying to do. Uh, I think all of them would probably do a good job, but. Um, coastline just kind of rose to the top. Chris, were you part of this group interviewing all the group? Or yes, you were. Yes, I sat in the, the whole task force, yes. or yes. future future funding task force. Okay. We call it that. Okay. That was basically yeah. the interview committee. Yep. Okay. Oh, great. I knew that, but I just wanted to clarify and make sure. And but, Chief didn't. Chief never ate a donut. I didn't eat a donut. No spin the donuts. That's, that's our donuts. that's our story, and we're sticking. No to donuts. It. Thank you, Chris, for backing me up there. Uh, are you okay if I ask uh, Assistant Chief Peters if he had anything yeah. additional to ask to add I, to offer towards that? I can't add anything that hasn't already been said. I think it was four really good presentations. I think they were really unique, and each one of them brought something a little bit different. I think as far as expertise and what they what they were doing, but. Thank Don't you. we need to take a vote on this? Yeah, so th there's that's part of this is asking you to to uh, unless I there's questions. That, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, I, I just want to make sure. Yep. Um, so this is board approval right. for a selection yeah. of the public relations. Uh, yeah, okay. What chief said. But there's questions from Marilyn. <laughs> I have oh, okay. Well. For my host, I wish he wasn't here. <laughs> so this um, says that it's not to exceed eight thousand dollars. It's not my understanding. We have eighty thousand dollars in the budget. Um, yeah, so they have in here that um, the budget is currently 60000 allocated for this, um, and that we would need to make adjustments if the service agreement exceeded that amount. They exceeded the 60 or the 80? Exceeded the 60. So where is, services. Where is, there is no $60,000 in your budget. Not the fire chiefs, correct? Fire we, chief. we have some. We have twenty thousand dollars in professional services out of bit out of fourteen hundred line item business services. Okay, so business. Uh, you, your office has fifty, and um, what was the rest of them? I mean, there are a lot of categories of that. So yeah, it's it's we put fifty in mind, and then we increase business services to allocate because we were unsure exactly what the proposal. We thought it would come in. At the 50 to 55. So that's why that you see that in my line item. Just didn't under, just didn't know what we were facing. So we put in the fire chief's line item. So yeah. we we uh, put extra money in business services for that reason. But the um, bid, if you will, is mm -hmm. for 53,000, not 80. Correct. So why would I approve a 50% added or on? So a lot of this also is post. We don't know every single entity as, as we talked about, what's it look like getting this approved? I'm not, this is the first time for me running through it. I don't know if there's a campaign that we go out, should this be a, a voter approved with the public of initiating the public as a thank you, things of that nature. So that's that's really why why there was up to that amount and not to exceed that amount. Would there be materials costs included in this? Are you talking about for like a like signs? Flyers and, and signs and no, that no. would come out of uh, Director Hodge, you'd have to help me here, but out of a PAC committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pack. Oh, oh, we can't oh, pay for we that. Can't pay for oh, that. We cannot pay for that. No, no. You can pay for an educational piece. 
right. directly right. education, not That's advocate. It. You can't say both words. Okay. Yeah. They, they, but you can not, not, I mean, they, say this is what prior form, you can okay. say this is what it would do. Okay. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Great. And I, I think part of it, I could chief, part of it, Marilyn, is because what what the bill, if you will, will be is going to be somewhat determined by what we decide to do. Mm -hmm. Well, the proposal is for a fifty is for fifty three thousand six hundred dollars. Yeah, given and not eighty thousand. Given what they listed, I'm not giving staff a slush fund who decide to go spend another twenty five thousand dollars somewhere. I guess I wouldn't consider it a slush fund. Um, well, it, we're already budget wise, you know, because so you, if you if you exceed it, then we're going to start eroding the income costs again. We're already four hundred ten thousand dollars to purchase the real property out of sync with our budget. So, you know, when is too much is too much. I love your question. It's not sync. It's allocated funds that are currently in the budget under professional services. This is not an ending fund balance conversation. Okay. This is this is identified funds that are currently in the adopted budget that would be allocated for that. We have set the standard on what we feel is polling and what we what we feel as far as the uh, that's needed for the PR firm in the event that this passes, which we are hopeful it does. We aren't we don't know if there's going to be something that, that we need to, to utilize the PR firm to thank the public. And we also don't know should we get polling back that doesn't reflect what we what we want if we need to do another small round of polling. That is why you see what you see. So it's not a slush fund. These are allocated allocated uh, money within the current fiscal year, budget approved, adopted. That's that's what you see before you. There's no slush fund or hiding money in this. So you don't expect that the PR firm is actually going to up their bid? To not at all. What I see is what you see as far as the bid. I just don't want to say it's $53,000 and then come back to you because we didn't, we got results back from, from uh, the polling that isn't what we wanted to see, or this passes and we decide this is really what we need to do to take forward to the public to some thank you and educate on what exactly they had. Just it's as we were getting feedback from the PR firms, there was a wide range of information that we gathered. And as a, as a group, we thought best to give ourselves a little bit of, of room. Because there is no historical data for us. We don't, yeah, we've never gone for 11. Yeah, I know. So that's, yeah. So yeah. we have not, I don't think we even hired. Did we ever hire? We so, didn't. We so didn't. all these things are new to us. Mm -hmm. So, Correct. and it's, it's, it's really difficult given where we are to outline a hard scope of work. It's not like taking something to a contractor and say, here's the building bit on that. This is a campaign, you know, and I've done a number of them. How much would this campaign cost is a question of like how high is up it all depends on what you decide what you really want to do and and all of them have varying um, varying levels and suggestions of what it should do two poles three poles it all depends on what we decide to take from what amounts to almost a cafeteria menu yes well and that's what i would have thought too uh, request for proposals would have been it would have said we have fifty thousand dollars or sixty or whatever what are you going to do for it and it doesn't sound to me and my reading of the responses that that's not what happened we everybody just said we'd like to hire a pr firm and that's why we got one that's like one hundred fifty thousand dollars and another one that was thirty seven thousand dollars so i just found but you know it's done and you're satisfied with the process i am too but it just seemed to me to you know, that's what I would have said is, here's what I got. And what I do you got? Because I wouldn't want to go tell an expert, here's what we have to spend. We what, what can to you tell spend? They will spend whatever they well, can. They, they will unless you tell them not to. Yeah. And that's that's monitoring as you go along. But that's what we were looking at is for them because they're the expert. Tell us what it is we need to do. Well, like you said, you can do this and you can do that. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why we ended up where we are with a little bit of wiggle room and they had a lot of it with the numbers if you pull them apart and get them apples to apples because the one that was real high included the cost of mailers mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's which stuff. right there if you were going to do a mailer you don't want to have them do the mailer because you're paying markup on somebody printing and the printing company and everything else you would have them design it and then go pay the printing company direct so you don't get the profit markup on that that actual cost so that was part of it when you kind of peel them apart and get them to an apples to apples there 
they're really not that far apart. This is the business part of it, Marvin. I agree with Chris's statement. When when you have when you are hiring a advertising firm for a business, you cannot tell them I have ten thousand dollars. What can you do for me? And That's exactly I, what you tell them. Well, no, you cannot tell them because what happened was when I started my business, I I called an advertising firm. They would ask me, "What's your budget?" I said twenty thousand dollars. They would never return the phone call because they that is they know my budget is supposed to be their commission for the work they do. So it's just, it's not a tangible, uh, measurable contract. That's the, the so challenge. So you're suggesting there not be a cap on this contract? I'm sorry? You're sitting, saying you don't want a cap on the contract? No, we want, to have, we want to have a cap, but we do want to have a cap. And that's what we are saying 60 or whatever time amount. And I has not involved in this all the protocols that you guys have been going through all of you. So my, I'm talking from the business perspective. When I'm hiring a contractor, unless it's a machine or a truck, this is very intangible. That is, you cannot quantify. And, and there, are, there are also some uh, flexibility in spending. This is, again, is marketing, advertising is pretty much the same format. In, I've dealt with the advertising agencies in my business. That's why I can say how, and I would, if it is my own money, I would proceed just like what we are doing. Jim, do you have anything to say? Um, yeah, I appreciate Director Wall's uh, question because I also noticed that the proposal was 53,500, the budget was 60,000 and we were asking for 80. So I was actually gonna ask that same question, but um, but then I also understand this levy development process. There's a lot to it, a lot we don't know. We've never done it before. And since the committee met, if the committee feels that the 80,000 cap was more reasonable just so we can cover it appropriately, to me, that makes a lot of sense and I trust Chris and the committee's uh, thought process on that. So I would support the not to exceed 80. Yes. Thanks, Jim. I love Marilyn's questions and, and concern. Um, and, and especially with what we've been through this last year, but I would also like to point back to what we've been through this last year and the actions of this administration and the actions of this board have been very fiscally responsible. I'm not going to change that now. So I'm not, I'm not just going to go spend money for the sake of having some slush fund to spend money. It's what it is to give us so that we get the right product. Um, and also giving us a little bit of, of breathing room should what we feel as a committee is that $53,000 mark, something comes up that we didn't see because I just, I'm, I've never done the levy process. Chris has run many campaigns, hasn't done a levy process. The local ha hasn't done any as far as us and, and same with Steve. So this is just a little bit of, of should we need to do another study, uh, another polling, or should we need to do some sort of post success when we win the win this levy uh, uh, campaign with the KR firm? That's it. But I also, that's one of the beauty of this committee. We have the local, we have a director, we have the staff. Yeah. So this is a, a very strong group of people has interest. Chris is not the one to allow for slush fund. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And you know, I was, I'm so glad. And then local, they don't have interest. They don't want to spend money on advertising or marketing because that's the money they could be bargaining for the next year's contract. So I understand that and I, I, I trust the uh, committee's recommendations. Great questions, though, to make sure it is. Got hold of, of course, that's why we yes. have. That's it. And uh, that's what we are always looking forward to hearing from Merlin yeah. that we never think about. You sound like Inspector Amos. <laughs> <laughs> what he said to me, I always wait to hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, Merlin, if you look at it, I think that's one of the strengths of this board. Every one of us have a different strength. 
and that strength be making us unified and working in a functional. Uh, I think it's one of the good boards around. Okay, with that, any other comments or questions, Marilyn? No, I want to clarify. I don't have any problem with the selection process, although I think the RFP was it wouldn't be a good idea. And um, the, I know everybody did their best to come to the number. So I just want, as you point out, Chief, we've had a tough fiscal year. Now is not the time to get letting our guard down and say, oh, what's another $20,000? Well, as you said, it's $20,000. Exactly. And so 20,000 is, is a lot of money. Yeah, it is. With some of the cuts that we're making, we're at a $1,000 yeah, level. Exactly. So, yeah. So. Okay. Hearing any other, nobody has any questions? Director Jim, do you have any comments or anything to share? Okay. That, can I ask you to have a motion to, with the board approval of the public relations firm selection? So moved. I still Chris moved. Jim, I'll, are you seconding? I'll second then. Maria, please call the roll. Uh, Thomas? Yes. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Are you going to say who we selected? <laughs> Coastline. Oh, Coastline. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. Could you rephrase the question? Yes. Request the board approval of okay. public session firm Coastline. Coastline. Yes. Was file chief to work with the contract. Yes, that is exactly it. So, uh, do I need to restate that, um, Marilyn? Thomas just did. He just did, right? So, it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Second approved. Chris, you got to make sure Jim approves the uh, the change with the second. Yes, I second it again. Okay, Thomas. Yes. Jim. Yes. 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 Marilyn. Yeah. Thank you. That was unanimous. Then, the other business board and committee um, liaison report. Interagency is the only one we have listed. Jim, would you want to take on to the IGA with the Gladstone? There were a lot of our healthy, detailed discussion. It took about an hour and a half, I think more yes. than we expected. And we also had a Sandy IGA since our last board meeting. Correct. Would you like to make any comments on that, Jim, please? Um, sure. Uh, our Sandy... IGA committee meeting was on July 25th. We met out at the Boring Fire Station. Uh, it was a real good meeting, the first one we've done in person with them in several years. Uh, most of the discussion, as everyone knows, revolved around the receipt of the feasibility study that we received. Uh, the general feeling by the directors at the meeting and most of the staff was uh, the study was good, informative. Um, as most of us probably know that have read it, the recommendation of uh, furthering the operational partnership, what we call a contract for service, a uh, little discussion around that and what that means, but really all just discussion uh, waiting for the joint board meeting, which will be next Monday, August 22nd, which both boards will hear the presentation and then we'll probably have further discussions, but it was a good meeting. Um, we met on August 11th uh, with, for the Gladstone Joint Oversight Committee meeting. Uh, Thomas mentioned it was also a really good meeting. Contract seems to be going very well. Good comments from Gladstone's two city councilors and the city administrator. The calls seem to be going well. There was a lot of talk about uh, the community engagement, the crew there and the chief and our prevention staff seems to be doing a really good job uh, attending their events this summer. So it was all great, great comments. Uh, some discussion about how the transitioning of Gladstone's previous part-time personnel, which are now transferring to our volunteer program. Uh, they just want to make sure that that that's going well and there are opportunities for those individuals and we ensured them that it, that it was and it was moving along. Uh, so overall, a good meeting and we're meeting again 
in October. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> to add on to the sand, uh, Gladstone, I'm so happy to see Brian Stewart and Nick was there and Jim and I, the city councilor had some, I can feel their her anxiety. She's worried that the firefighter, there were what, five of them? Yes. Five of them growing a salary until June 1. Now they are unemployed. And she's really worried that because of what they have done, the council agreement, we have five employees, unemployed men, and she's worried about them. And I can see the genuine concern from her because she'll have to face uh, what, 4,000 voters in Gladstone? Yeah, 12, something yeah. like that. So I just, I read that. Yeah, so exactly. uh, because of Jim and Nick and all of us, we were able to reassure her. We, will, we had process and Jim was able to explain the national standard for uh, selecting volunteer firefighters. So we put some what a legitimate uh, answer to her uh, questions. It's not just uh, the fire chief talking about or the deputy chief talking about things. And we were facing face with her. And I saw the real anxiety and fear in her face because she's worried. And she's on the street. She has going, she's going to be confronted by those people. Then the other counselor said, I, I talked to every one of them. They are drawing, they were drawing $6,000 before. Now they are getting unemployment. They are happy. <laughs> so there are both the sides of that. So the, the, the benefit of having this follow up with the uh, uh, feasibility, I mean, interagency, uh, inter -agency, it's been time and again, Chris, I have seen how it helped us to communicate with the other agencies. So thank you. Do you want to add anything more to it? No, uh, did we speak to the Sa Sandy piece? We haven't spoken to the Sandy no. piece yet. Okay. Sandy, he's, he mentioned he's going to do that. that. He did mention a little bit of Sandy. That was good. So that we'll, we'll more with that next Monday. Um, uh, no, I, I think that it, it eliminates these these interagency meetings are, are a great opportunity to eliminate fear. Overall, what I see from the city council uh, with Gladstone is relief. Uh, there relief. There's relief for the level of service that we are providing our citizens. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was a tough time just trying to help help her to process paid on call versus what we have as volunteer, and they can't come over as permanent firefighters that come over as volunteers. Once we were able to articulate our process, it, 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 we, we eliminated the fears, so. And on the same sense, they could not talk enough about how, how the community appreciate yeah. our service. Every call they had, these counselors have been going out and talking to the, uh, the people affected, and they really uh, couldn't say enough, I'm having, one or two EMT on the track is kind of a dream come true yeah. for them. They the, so they really appreciate it too. And again, it's not only uh, explaining their uh, concern, but also hearing good thing. Jim? Um, I think it's worth mentioning too, we were presented the data as far as the Gladstone engine, how many calls that they are have responded to in Gladstone for June and July and uh, how many calls they responded to outside of Gladstone. And it was interesting, 400 and something calls in the city of Gladstone that that engine covered. And they responded to Clackamas 169 times in two months. So 100, we had an engine company staff 24 seven with a paramedic that responded to Oregon City, Oak Lodge and Clackamas 169 times that we didn't have before. So to me, that was very significant. So I think that's worth mentioning and shows that win-win, you know, by us uh, doing a contract and that engine being staffed is not just helping Gladstone. It's already proven in just two months to help us, you know, quite a number of times. Yeah, this is not a one-way street. This is, like Jim said, it's a win-win situation. Any other questions or concern? Yes, thank you. Chief Brown, will you give an update about the fire chief? 
Yes. Thank you, sir, yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, the month of July was very, very busy. I'm stealing a lot of Chief Dieter's thunder here as far as what he was going to share. So he's going to be really, really happy. Ready to cross okay. it off. Yeah. So he's ready to cross off everything that he was going to share. But it was very, very busy uh, as far as uh, PR events. Um, one of the things I'd like to point out is just the community medic, Amy Jo Cook, and uh, uh, Fire Marshal Sean Olson. And Isaac, you were there as well, weren't you? Yep. Uh, as far as their efforts in the uh, fire bucket uh, distribution uh, that uh, that we engage with as well as uh, local partners for the Newell Creek area. Um, and it contained first aid kits, some hygiene products, uh, some solar powered uh, um, uh, kits so that it, we didn't, it would help to prevent fires. Um, so battery sources, power sources that are solar in nature instead of utilizing other other avenues, poncho, warming blankets, uh, solar phone charger, and then a um, uh, an extinguisher, fire extinguisher, in the event that there were some fires. So uh, this was all uh, came from a uh, Oregon State Fire Marshal's grant, and it was just another effort that we that we do in the community that just was awesome, and, and just super proud of, of Amy Jo and her part with it, as well as. Uh, Chief Olson and uh, PIO Isaac Hamilton, as far as engaging in the public and, and just represent the fire district like they do. Was there enough money from that grant for all this, or do they would you anticipate any further need for the funds for that grant? Uh, is there a need? I think it was maxed. Yeah, yeah, it was it was maxed, um, but it was amazing to be a part of it, just to see how um, how well received it was and. Um, realistically, for me, they were kind enough to let me go go along, and um, you know, I was there to get some pictures and to kind of watch. I haven't been a part of um, our community paramedicine program very much, but it was super impressive just to see the work that she does with all the other agencies. And so, um, I think like more of this would be beneficial. I said the reason I'm asking, I see an opportunity for. The local organization to support mm. if there should there be a need uh, for funding because we remember we used to do the fire smoke alarm for the mobile home parts we haven't done that for the last two three years because of the covid mm -hmm. and we are going to i talked to tammy Oman, and we are Good. going to look into it and restart that love that uh, but also there are other organizations in the community nonprofits who can support us for this endeavor, because like, for example, Clackamas Rotary gives hygiene kits to all the sheriff's department, police cars, every one of them are equipped with the hygiene kits for providing to the homeless. So there is opportunity, uh, not only to work with the nonprofit, but also financially, we don't have to drain our money. We can uh, reach out to them to get the money. Okay, thank Thanks. you. There was a lot of good PR, both on the um, um, yes, on the web and on the in print newspaper. I saw awesome. both. Yeah, good, very good. Uh, I would love. There's so many more instances that I want to that I want to grab and talk about, but I don't want to rob Steve. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna not too late, right? Defer my time. I will say one small thing though is I don't know what's going on, but I'm in a lot of dunk takes. Okay. The and, word is out. Yeah, the word's out. And so a lot of people are doing dunk takes, but this dunk tank that uh that Chief Schmerber and myself engaged in this this last event, I couldn't see through the water. So uh it was a, a very interesting dunk tank, but yet uh I think I got dunked about 20 times. So it was good. It was all for a good cause. Uh really enjoyed getting out with the community. Chief, uh, yes. I was curious. How would board members become aware of where it is you're sitting? Yeah, there might, <laughs> might be a reason why I didn't share that one with the board members so that I didn't have. I kind of thought there might be, and I feel kind of lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want Director Haas to be giving out $100 bills for people to dunk me. So that's where. I don't need to do that. I used to be able to throw to second base. Yeah, I know you could. You know. I know you could. Yeah, I know you could. Nice, darn it. Yeah, so the, the rest of it, it's just a small update. I'm on the advisory committee for the governor for Senate Bill 762. Uh, the wildfire risk map was a big topic mm -hmm. for July. Um, ODF has since uh, taken it back to do some revisions to it, but that's uh, been occupying a lot of time. Uh, uh, this last month was 
helping to, to navigate and mitigate the, the rollout of that ODF. It's, it's kind of had to, they've had to roll out this, this map based on legislation and, and it's, it's been an interesting, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're limited to topography, weather, fuel loads, and, uh, and so it's, it's just, it's kind of been a uh, little bit of a, of a nightmare. A little bit for them, so they're they're battling. It's been brutal. Yeah, there's been just a lot of a lot of meetings. Normally, we meet uh, quarterly with some spot meetings on on Thursday evenings and Fridays, and this has been uh, there's July was a busy one. Right, bad PR. Yeah, yeah, and then and then with that, a lot of it, just like anything, you you get a little bit of of maybe not. The, mo the best or most truthful information that runs through the whole entire state mm -hmm. and and it gets legs and runs so um but uh, the the agencies are are on it and they should have a better a, a product i don't want to say better product but a product to deliver to, to uh, the public here in the next month and a half or so thank you now steve now let's go to steve uh thank you chief thank you members of the board uh, I'll start out with uh, health and safety. Uh, they spent most of the month delivering um, the uh, on-site fitness testing. They go to each station. On. They also delivered some uh, safety talks with each crew and then talked about documenting some of the um, traumatic and stressful calls that they got on a, a platform for that. And then uh, they're also providing the pre-physical for 15 uh, new hires and two alternates. So they, they're working on that. Uh, community services, Chief already stole a bunch of it, but uh, July kind of marked, uh, we started to crest into it in June, and then in July it kind of was full bore, and August was even bigger. So I'm having a dunk tank at my house with Chief at the end of August. <laughs> you guys like to go? And they're doing some sewer work, and I thought we would put some water in there, but. Uh, Anyhow, so August is very busy. We've all been participating and uh, they have any, anything and everything we can. Uh, you know, one thing I will say is that I think that uh, our crews and our people um, in the past may not have been super excited about attending some of these later events and all that stuff, but this year has been kind of different. I think we're all eager to get out and kind of just mingle a little bit. So it's been good so far. And then um, human capital, we have a couple of special projects going on, one of which is uh, a physician's desk manual. So we don't have anything like that right now. So as the physicians develop sort of uh, a here's the do's and don'ts, sort of just the gist of what it is. So we're working on that. Uh, and then working with uh, LBG, which is our insurance provider to update our uh, benefits website. And held the training technician interviews, and then we did the regular uh, civil service meeting in July, held that as well. How many um, applications did we get for this, this a training technician? Well, that's not a civil service, but that's an in-house. Oh, that's in-house. Yeah, and I believe it was eight. I think it was eight, yeah. Uh, but that's an internal process, oh, okay. uh, civil service. And then FMO, uh, besides all their regular duties and you know, if you're doing the safety walk at the pickathon and all that stuff, they've been out in force helping with the um, public public events and all that. Just can't commend those the, that group enough. Our career staff, our volunteer staff, as you know, we were down a little bit on volunteers and we're working on that, that process. And we just held the written test for the volunteers. But really, this group has kind of stepped up a little bit to help everybody out. And uh, you know, we, we couldn't. So. Happy to answer any questions. No, any questions? Jim? No, Chris. Just are, are you holding the dunk tank for any specific reason or just because you're feeling a little left out? <laughs> well, I well, they're doing sewer work, so I thought they needed somewhere to put the water. Yeah. I mean, you just have them over. Steve, I have been seeing though on LinkedIn, we are advertising for a technician. What is, the, what is that position here? Technician. The training technician. training technician. Yeah, so that was the the position he just talked about. It was. Oh, for internal also we have to advertise well, outside. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. when I when I say internal, it's outside of civil service rules, meaning oh, okay. we have to follow that process. Okay. So great, thank you. Okay, with uh, Assistant Chief now, 
financial manager, Michael. Okay, thank you. Yeah, filling in for CFO Whitaker this month. Uh, for this month's uh, board meeting, we uh, are providing the fiscal year 21 22 year end results uh, just because uh, there's not too much data yet for the new fiscal year. Uh, but next month, we're, we'll come with uh, July and August data. So the fiscal year 2022 data, um, the results are largely final. Um, there may be some minor um, edits uh, once we um, have discussions with our new auditors, uh, if, they, if they have any things that they might want changed. Uh, we also have some good news about um, staying within uh, appropriation limits for each functional area. Uh, and the current numbers uh, right now, uh, give us an opening uh, general fund balance of roughly $15.8 million. Uh, the adopted budget assumed 15.1, so uh, we're on track, um, even if we had some adjustments from auditors at the discussion. And uh, the final, uh, the finalized adopted budget document um, you can find on the uh, Pacumus Fire website, um, and it's also been delivered to the county clerk. And then some updates for uh, support services. Uh, logistics is working on uh, the creation of a logistics emergency response cache. And so this is a pallet of um, enough MREs to feed approximately uh, five alarm incidents. And uh, fleet is engaged in getting the Aurora apparatus up to speed. And the communications team um, successfully completed a year long effort to move the Highland repeater to the C800 tower. And, and this um, new tower is, is taller, which uh, dramatically increases coverage. Those are my updates for, um, for the division. Do you have any questions? We are prepared. We are going to have the auditing done earlier than last year, right? Isn't that something the, uh, you talked about? Yeah, so the, the initial plan was to actually, we wanted to have it done earlier than, than we are having it done. Um, but since we were um, a little late in getting um, on their list um, when we when we came on with this new auditor, so we kind of have to wait in line. Um, oh. So we actually, um, we have the interim, um, we have our interim visit next week. Um, and then, yeah, next year we do plan to, to try to get bumped up on that. On that line, so we can have an earlier process done. Good. Yeah, good job of taking with that, Chris. No, sir. Do you have any questions? No questions for me. Thank you, Michael. Jim. Do you have any questions for Michael? <clears throat> Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Office of the Emergency Services Chief Dan Miller. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, just a couple quick uh, bullets. Uh, call volume um, and significant calls in July was uh, the significant calls on call volume was. Uh, a little uneventful, so there wasn't a lot to post for um, for for significant incidents. So uh, I just want to highlight a couple of things. Our Lateral Academy 2201, uh, they hit the line on August 1st. So there's 10 lateral firefighters that we've got um, virtually from around the Northwest and um, even across the, to the East Coast. We pulled people into our organization. So they're on the line working right now uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks, and they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, highlighted in the board report, the training grounds. For anybody who spent any time out there, um, firefighters are really good at collecting stuff on flat surfaces, <laughs> and it uh, becomes uh, somewhat of uh, um, overwhelming. And Chief uh, Kyle Wilson has kind of taken the lead on that, and it is completely revamped right now. Uh, we're just getting uh, finishing safety components on a new vertical ventilation prop that uh, was built last year. Um, this is going to be a phenomenal training opportunity. The old warehouse on the south side of the campus uh, now has a recruit classroom for our, our academy. So it's a, we call it a dirty classroom. You can walk in there with turnouts. There's uh, the reserve training apparatus is parked right there. So they can do their rig checks. They can get their training, their gear lockers. Everything is there. So it's very well organized, um, making the most out of the, the limited space that we have there at 130th. So Chief Olson's doing a great job. Uh, he's brought in uh, staff on-duty crews, um, facilities, everybody to help kind of utilize their, their tools to kind of move things around and clean that up. So uh, it looks really, really good. The, uh, the kind of a wildland update, uh, the McKinney fire uh, in California, it was mentioned in the board report, but uh, we did send um, uh, two task force leaders uh, with uh, Jeff Meninga and uh, Tyson 
Lowther one down there. They were there from the 31st of July to the 7th of August. Uh, interface engine 314, interface engine 310, and water tender 314, and then also Colton and Lake Oswego contributed to that. So they have a lot of really great stories of the weather that they ran into. Um, they got there thinking it was a wildfire, which it was, but it turned into three inches of rain and an hour and flooding and washing out roads. So really interesting experience for them. Um, they had the Miller Road fire, which was just outside of Maupin that, uh, that occurred just recently. So we had IMT members go there with Chief Stewart, uh, Mark Corliss, uh, Scott Ballard, and they also uh, requested Crew 30, who has a significant impact on getting that fire hooked and getting it contained. So uh, everybody did a great job there. They wrapped it up fairly quick and uh, were able to come home and, uh, and the crew's back available, ready for, ready for uh, the next call. Uh, so, so we had some in-district uh, in incidents where we utilized Crew 30. The Marmot Road fire that happened outside of Sandy a month ago uh, was one of the first ones and just kind of demonstrates uh, the, the in-district benefit to having a hand crew there. Uh, Chief Brent Olson would say that having that crew there, it, it saved an additional alarm. So an additional alarm of four other companies um, at, out of four fire stations, it prevented them from having to come because we had crew 30 there. So uh, we had uh, about 10 days ago, we had a fire in the grasslands uh, just behind, just south of the aquatic park, just down the road from here. And the same thing, we brought in crew 30 um, and they came in there and we cut our, our career companies uh, loose and crew mopped up everything and, uh, and it was phenomenal. And then just yesterday, Rock Creek drainage, we had an incident uh, that lasted about nine hours mm -hmm. right there off 152nd 212. And we were able to get the crews to do initial attack. And then uh, the, the hand crew came in and worked for about additional seven hours. Um, and got everybody else back in their fire stations available for calls. So um, it's been very ben beneficial. Uh, we hope that uh, we can get the crew out here um, if anything else comes up in the state, but uh, they're getting a lot of experience, a lot of great training. So that's the operations update. If you have any questions? Thank you. I have a question. I don't know if it is for Steve or you. Yeah. No, it's for Steve. <laughs> no. uh, when we have this new, when we hire this new, lateral firefighters mm -hmm. is it possible for them to have them come to a board meeting so yeah. that an introduction of us to them uh, you know, so they can kind of have a connectivity so they did they, they met director haas at the graduation yeah um, i know the graduation is one the the, the the issue that i can see and then i'll i'm interjecting myself i'm sorry dan but they're all on Schedule. three different shifts. Schedules. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but it doesn't have to be one month, you know. Just keep in mind, you know, there are 10 people maybe over two or three months. We mean Zoom in, not actually physically at the house. But I'd be Zoom would be fine. But I just like to see them familiarize with the board format and have an understanding. Because especially the people came from East Coast. Yeah. I can understand the Northwest people might be familiar. It's just kind of a uh, personal touch to them. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's interesting all the things that we've talked about with onboarding an employee and and learning our system, and we do focus a lot operationally, right? Like getting them in the door of the fire station and, and used to our equipment. But there is a lot, especially a lot of people come from a city department, and they they're not part of a special district, and they don't understand how how the budget works. And we kind of talk about it at a at a higher level and. Um, but a lot of people just don't, they don't grasp it. They don't know how that works. And same thing with the board of directors, you know? Yeah, the they don't know if they have board members like me and Mario and Chris here. Yeah. So asking all the questions about spending money. Yeah. yeah. Are, the city is used to, it's in, yeah, they will give it. The city gives. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing when studying for promotional exams, you should probably know the five board members by heart yes. and no, but meeting them is a whole nother thing. So <laughs> we, there's, no, we have yeah. no group. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and actually, you know, I'm just thinking about exposing them to the organization uh, rather than just being in a fire station or the truck they work with. Yeah, that's just a great point. Thank you, yeah. Thomas. Okay, with that, let's see here. We have professional firefighters. Andrew, you're all ready. Go for it, sir. 
Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I just have a couple items to update you guys on. Uh, we had our 56th biannual IAFF convention in Ottawa last week, and we sent two members to that convention. And uh, recently, the Oregon State Firefighters Council was just awarded a peer support grant for resiliency training. And uh, TVFNR Local 1660 is going to be hosting that September 7th and 8th. It's a one day class and any member can attend. So that's all I have. If you guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you for serving on that committee with uh, Chris and the rest of the chief and the crew. So um, we appreciate your contribution to that. I, I would echo that, Andrew. It's, it, it is once again, it's been great to have you on there. Uh, the interview process, the, the perspective you brought was really insightful and involved, and I appreciate your uh, participation. Thank you for that, Director House. I appreciate it. Thank you. Chief. Just something real quick. I, I love Andrew. Uh, the 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 full frontal, like the full focus on the mental health aspect for our firefighters, and I love that that the union and the local is is uh, participating in that. Uh, not only at the state level, but at, a, at, a, at across the United States. I think that's phenomenal that, that we are addressing that because for such a long time, it was a stigma and, and we are calling it out and saying no more. So really, really proud of you guys for stepping up and, and offering this class and, and just being a part of that and being proactive and taking care of our people. I, I love it. It's so, also timely, yeah, because all across the board, sports, everywhere, the mental health issue has yeah. come up and very big time. Yeah. So uh, thank you. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Okay. President Volunteer Association report. President Carney, are you there? Oh, here you are. Yes, I am. Uh, members of the board and uh, chief officers. First, um, an apology for what happened last, mo uh, last month. I do have the uh, drill topics as promised. Uh, <clears throat> they were mobile attack and progressive closeways, firefighter down slash converting the pack, that's putting the rip pack on, uh, firefighter CPR while in gear, mass casualty incident, water uh, rescue refresher, and down firefighter. <clears throat> uh, the, that was the July drills. The June drills were wellness, uh, gave a presentation, mass casualty incident, uh, computer-aided dispatch, rural water supply, multiple patient service scenes, uh, same basic thing as uh, multiple uh, MCI, uh, motor vehicle accident skills, CAD and radio communications. Uh, as far as coverages go, <clears throat> excuse me, station 12 was 24 out of 31. Station 13 was 13 out of 31. Station 21 was 20 out of 31 with an additional 10 out of 31 signing up to respond from home. Uh, that's the sum total of what I have to report. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions or comments for Jerry? Thank you, Jerry. Re President thank Carney, you. thank you so much. And you know, this is uh, our next board of directors meeting will be on Monday, September 19, 2022 at 5 p.m. The meeting will be hybrid and we are going to continue to be hybrid until the state mandate. Is that why you are doing this? We have to, based on ORS, offer the oh. ability for a hybrid meeting. Yeah, but we can open it up, can't we? Yes, that, right. that's going to be the discretion of the board uh, of, of when we want to, to do that. Okay. Do you have any thoughts about that? No. I, I think it's a fine memo, but because we're going to, if we have people here, I don't know how we're going to have the screen, where are you going to put the public? Yes. Put the screen. Well, you put the screen right over there. Yeah. We just have to look. But I have had people ask me when, when we're going to open up because we are one of the last organizations to not have the meetings. Is it? Up. Yeah. So much of this 
we wanted to make sure this worked and then really look I, I, one of the ideas was just to have them row behind this table so bringing these tables a little bit closer sure. um but yeah we'll, we'll defer to to the board here with this one this is probably a discussion well, we should yeah. have well, next month yeah. jim do you have any comments no okay the meeting will be hybrid with the public invited to attend by the remote video conferencing and with that the federal board of directors meeting is now adjourned at 6 or 5 p.m yeah, well, that's just, that's really we did. <laughs> yeah. Um,